Hi there, so the welcome to the first segment of Lecture 6. And this segment's about strains, and we just want to define strains, what they are, and what we mean by them. Um, we'll look at a few cases. So, imagine you take a body, I know, here's a body, um, and we'll consider a little element within it. Um, again, it's an element that has faces. It still has the property of voluminous, which means it has the property of having faces. So it has uh, directions and faces on which those directions apply, so it's a tensor. We're going to be dealing with tensor quantities again. Um, now imagine that the displacement of that volume through the body due to some deformation is described by a vector u, that is uh, ui, um, uh, which is called is the displacement field, that is u1, u2, u3. And we define uh, the deformation tensor, E, so this is our deformation tensor, E, as being uh, Eij is d uh, or partial ui by position basis vector xj. So it's a tensor, so E11 is equal to partial u1 by dx1, um, E12 is partial u1 uh, by dx2, um, and so on. And uh, well, let's define a third one. E21 is partial u2 by dx1. And that's for our uh, basis vectors x1, uh, x2. They just have to be a right handed set. And x3. And <coughs> um, now. Having def described the deformation tensor, let's think about a, a few cases. So, um, one case we can consider is this case. Let's make it a bit bigger. So, here's our x1 and x2. And uh, here's our original body. And if our original body rotates, it does something like that. And what it's done is it's rotated a bit, um, and this would be E21. So this coordinate's moved to here. So it's rotated in the two direction, and that's the one basis vector that's moved. Um, and this one here is E12. And here, those are, so that's the movement of the, uh, in the one direction of the two basis vector. And that's equal to minus E21, in this case of pure rotation. So you can see that we can have deformations that don't involve any shape change of the body. Um, and that's pure rotation, for example. Now, uh, there's another type of, of deformation we can have. If we think of our infinitesimal body again. There's x1, there's x2, there's our original body. And that's where what's called pure shear. And in pure shear, the body distorts to be something like this. And there we have E21 and E12, and they're equal to each other. Um, so this uh, E2 here and this E21 here, that's moved up and that's moved up. So that's moved up. The one basis vector has moved up in 2, and the 2 basis vector has moved up in 1. Whereas here they were equal and opposite. This one moved down and that one moved up. Um, so there, that's then what's called pure shear. Now there's a problem, which is that previously when you've talked about shear, you've talked about the following situation. X1, X2, 
Mm. Previously, when you've talked about shear, you've talked about shearing the block over, so pulling it like that, so where the block's gone like that. And there, E21 is 0, but E12 has a value which you call gamma, the shear angle. Um, and uh, this is what's called simple shear. So when previously you've defined tor is equal to g gamma, where g is the shear modulus, you've been talking about simple shear. Um, and what we want to do, and what we're going to do now, is we're going to decompose the deformation tensor into one describing just the movement of the body, the rotation of the body, the spin, and the tensor shear strain of the body. So what we're going to do is we're going to decompose E into a symmetric part, strain IJ, and a rotation part, or a spin part, which we'll call omega IJ. And strain IJ is equal to the symmetric part of EIJ, and omega IJ is called the anti-symmetric part of EIJ. What do I mean by the symmetric part? I mean strain IJ is equal to uh, one half of EIJ plus EJI. That is, um, strain 1, 2 is equal to a half of, strain of deformation 1, 2 plus deformation 2, 1. Or strain 1, 1 is equal to a half of strain 1, 1 plus strain 1, 1. That is, it is strain one, uh, deformation 1, 1. And omega ij is defined in the following way, a half eij minus eji. So uh, this omega matrix has zeros on its leading diagonal, because that's zero if r and j are equal. And these are equal and opposite to each other. So this is, um, this is omega ij, and that's minus omega ij. Uh, sorry, 1, 2. That's omega 1, 3, and that's minus omega 1, 3. This is omega 2, 3, and that's minus omega 2, 3. That is, it's anti-symmetric across the leading diagonal. And therefore, if it's, anti if it's equal and opposite across the leading diagonal, on the leading diagonal, the only numbers that are equal and opposite to each other are zeros. Right? Whereas this guy is a strain matrix defined by strain 1, 1, strain 2, 2, strain 3, 3. And this condition means that it must be symmetric across the leading diagonal. So that's strain 1, 2, and that guy is also strain 1, 2. And this one's 1, 3. And this is strain 1, 3. And this is strain 2, 3. And that's strain 2, 3. So this pure shear there equal to each other across, and this pure rotation they're equal and opposite across. And this simple shear is a combination of the two. So this guy, when we combine them, we will find that strain 1, 2 is equal to um, 1 half gamma plus 0, if you like. That's in the deformation tensor. That's here. So strain 1, 2 is equal to gamma over 2. So this simple shear is equal to a um, pure shear of a half the size plus a rotation of a half the size because we'll also get omega 1, 2 is equal to a half gamma minus naught, which is equal to gamma over 2. OK, so that's for, the, for this simple shear case. OK. So, this is a, a problem of definition, if you like. The shear in simple shear is equal to um, twice the value of the s tensor shear strain. So, that's just a, a difference in the way you define things when you move to talking about tensors, is there's a factor of two involved. Um, so, that's the only little trick here, is there's that problem of a factor two. But otherwise, that's how we define strain and rotation. Um, we could also define 
the volume change being uh, the trace of this matrix um, as being uh, a delta is the volume change, delta V over V. And if you go and work it out, that's equal to a strain 1, 1 plus strain 2, 2 plus strain 3, 3, which is equal to, to 3 times the trace of the strain IJ. And uh, we'll come to talk about this later, but we could actually remove that and have a uh, dilatation matrix, which was just the volume change. And then we'd have a strain IJ matrix left behind um, that we, so if we added that to a strain matrix with zero dilatation, that would then be a strain matrix that just described the shape change, but not the volume change. So we can decompose this further into um, uh, the deformation tensor being a spin plus a volume change plus a shape change. And that's the next step beyond. And the shape change matrix we then call the deviatoric strain matrix. And there's actually an equivalent, a deviatoric stress matrix as well. Um, and uh, there's a factor three to think about in between the two definitions, but we'll come on to that. Um, so that's how we define strains. Um, and that sets us up in the next segment, uh, second half of lecture six, to think about uh, isotropic elasticity. And that's what we'll do next.